Guys, when it comes to bugging out, uh, you know, we think about our bug out bag uh, and we set up a bag with all the essentials and a lot of times we don't think any more about it. We think, well, we're just gonna, if something happens and we need to evacuate, we're just gonna head out into the woods and live off the land. To be honest with you, your chances of survival are very slim because you're just a glorified refugee and unless you really know what you're doing, uh, you know, it, it's not gonna end well. So we're gonna talk today though about bugging out in a sensible way. Uh, but before we do, I am big on bunkering in. That is my plan. I don't plan to bug out, but I have a plan to bug out because you may need to leave where you are. It may no, be no choice. Uh, and it, it's gonna be a life and death situation. So for me, uh, having my bug out bag is great, but I need to be able to transport it. That makes it better. So we're gonna talk today about living in your car. Uh, because one of the things about getting into a car in a grid down situation is the highways may be locked down. Uh, you know, there could be roadblocks. There could be a lot of situations to where it's very difficult to travel in a vehicle. But if you have a vehicle and you have a number of supplies in there and a way to live, uh, you know, you're going to be a lot better off if you have to bug out. The bigger the vehicle, the better. Um, here I have a Jeep, and while it's larger than a lot of cars, it's once you get everything packed in it, and you're going to see uh, there's not a lot of room. So the bigger the vehicle, the better. Uh, what would really be great is to have a motor home, but then you're a giant target. Uh, and then, of course, with a big covered trailer, that would be a, a good thing. But again, you're just larger, it's harder to maneuver, and you're going to be a bigger target. And so we're gonna look at some of the vital items. Uh, down below in the description, once we kind of go through things, if you have some thoughts or some things that I've overlooked, please leave it down there. Uh, that's a great place to be able to get a lot of information because the better my neighbor's prepared, the better I'm prepared. All right, guys, I've got a mock set up here. Um, got the sleeping bag. Um, one thing I want you to note is that this is for one person. Uh, and then you've got the seats up front. So this is really, going to be packed. I just kind of got what I had together. Uh, this is going to be a project I'm going to be working on. But you really need a larger vehicle uh, to really be comfortable. Of course, it's not necessarily comfort is not the goal, but definitely a big plus. And so, you know, you can just use every area to be able to pack things. A roof rack is definitely going to be a big plus whatever car you have. Uh, you can store items up there. Of course, you know, they are susceptible to rain and wind, but um, it gives you another option to be able to pack things up there. Now also a cargo basket works really great on the back of your vehicle. It gives you a lot of space. Here we have the Bronk box. I did a review on this a while back. Very secure way to carry a lot of gear. Of course, this is range gear, but you can put all kinds of survival items in there, lock it down. And there's a lot of choices out there. So, you know, it is one of the options along with a roof rack on top. Again, especially if you're in a smaller vehicle. And guys, keeping up with the maintenance of your vehicle, uh, you know, you want to make sure that those things you've been putting off, go ahead and have it checked. Make sure you get it fixed. Get your car in top shape uh, and, or whatever type vehicle you're using. Uh, and you want to make sure your tires are good, that your oil's changed. Make sure you have at least a half a tank of gasoline at all times. In fact, if you can keep it above that, it's better. If there is a situation that happens, it could be instantaneous and you just have to go. There's nothing worse than getting in your car and having no gas and thinking, man, I should have had these brakes fixed months ago. <laughs> so make sure your vehicle's in good shape. Also have tools available uh, and with you, a small toolkit to where you can take care of things if you need to, small little repairs that you can do. And so that may be the difference between keeping your car running and not. Now here's a sleeping bag. Uh, to me, that is one of the best options. This has a hood over it. You'll notice underneath I have one of the self-inflating U.S. military pads. Uh, you're going to want to have something under this. Uh, this is not going to be comfortable. It's a cargo space. So having something, whether it's an air mattress, something like this, even a yoga pad, something that you can put down and to be able to give yourself some comfort. And there's a ton of inflatable pillows. I just threw this one in, but uh, and I've got a couple of inflatable ones. I just had this handy. Uh, you're going to want to have something for your head. And one of my favorite survival options to keep warm is the Wubi. Uh, and this is US military issue. It's a very thin insulate material. It's light. It can just cover you uh, to keep you warm, but yet it can really keep you warm when it gets cold. Uh, and this just is a big, really a, a kind of a half shelter type thing. You can wrap it around you. I've done a video about what the Wubi is, why you need one. 
uh, but, but you might not want to be in your sleeping bag. You may just want to be sitting around and this will definitely keep you warm. Uh, and this could be called your blankie. Now food and water are very important. Uh, you've got Aquatainer, you can put water in it. It has a spout. Those are great. Uh, some of my favorite ways to store water. Uh, and of course, you know, it's a smaller container, but you're gonna need it smaller to be able to fit in your car. And there are smaller Aquatainers. Uh, but having some way to filter water is gonna be just as important. You may be able to get water from a public source, uh, but if you're going with streams and creeks, you're gonna have to be able to filter it. And so, you know, having a water filter system, Katadyne a Hiker Pro or even a big Berkey, uh, one of the travel Berkeys. I mean, there's a lot of different options for filtering. You can boil the water, you can add chlorine to the water. It doesn't remove the taste or the sediment. So I really like to have a good filter. But water's gonna be vital. Uh, and then you have your food, which we have a Canon cooler, uh, which is a soft insulated cooler, but you could have a, one of the hard coolers. What's really cool are the small little uh, battery powered refrigerators. Uh, and that way they can keep those things that you need to keep cold, cold. Uh, other foods, of course, you can have that stored away, but having cold items put together, I mean, this really can insulate. You'll need ice is the one thing. So if there is ice, then great. If not, the food's not gonna last anyway. Now you're gonna have to have storage and there's a ton of different storage containers. There's some that are very expensive, some that are fairly inexpensive, different sizes, different shapes. Uh, these are just a couple of different sizes, but we can store food in here. We can store tools, hygiene items, uh, all kind of different things. One thing that's very important uh, is to stay organized. And so having containers to put certain things in there is going to be important because otherwise you're going to have stuff strung all over the car. And then if you need it, you're not going to be able to find it. It does take up some room, but definitely worth its weight and its space. Next we have a fan, and the fan, this is a battery powered fan. Uh, you'll have to have batteries, but if you have one that's rechargeable, that's a great option. At least it keeps air moving through the vehicle. Uh, you can get air conditioners, portable air conditioners that are very small, and uh, that would be a great option because your car is gonna get really hot, especially in the summertime. But even if it's out in the sun, uh, it can get really stuffy, and so rolling your windows down partially is one thing, then you start to let insects in. Uh, with that, you can actually put screens on the outside, and that's a big plus. But having and thinking about climate control, another thing you can get are heaters. Uh, there's a number of different heaters, battery-powered heaters. There's the Heater Buddy. The Mr. Heater Buddy is one of the things uh, in a big vehicle that can really heat up a lot of area, and it's propane-fueled. So that is one option, but in a smaller car or even this Jeep, uh, it's going to be way too hot. So having some way to have some kind of heat source and a way to cool things off. Now one possibility for heat, uh, this is non-electronic, but we have these portable campfires uh, and they'll burn for four hours. And this will give you a little bit of heat uh, in, in an enclosed area. You want to vent even then, have a little window vented. But this gives you just another option. Uh, of course, you know, you only have four hours, so you want to use this sparingly. Power, being able to charge things, uh, having a source. Uh, these portable batteries are excellent and you can charge this maybe in a public setting uh, or you can have some kind of solar panel to be able to charge it. Uh, but this gives you, you know, whether you charge your lights, your phone, if your phone's working, uh, whatever you have, uh, different electronics, you can charge them on this. Maybe you have a small little iPad. And this gives you a lot of capability. Of course, obviously battery backups are great, but this will give you a lot more charge. But to me, if the grid is down, uh, this is gonna be great, at least to keep your flashlights going. The one thing I wanna get a little more specific about is your fire kit. Uh, and this is where all your fire tools are. Uh, fire is vital to survival. It's been that way since the beginning. Uh, it's one of those elements that man conquered early to survive. Uh, it boils your water, it cooks your food, gives you light, it gives you heat. It puts predators at bay. Uh, here I have a fire kit, and this is an Exotac tool roll. I like tool rolls for a lot of reasons, and this is one of them. But this one is kind of stuffed tight, but I like redundancy. So I have a number of different items here, uh, whether it's just a standard Bic lighter, which we have right here, uh, or we have our ferro rods here. Uh, in a number, we have uh, magnesium, uh, that's a big one. We have lifeboat matches, and we have tinder. And these tinder tabs are just excellent. Listen guys, tinder is one of the most important things to have a successful fire. 
Uh, we also have some fat wood. We have some Vaseline and cotton balls, blast match, uh, and we have a nano striker, which keeps trying to get away. And this is just to light that tinder. So having different ways, I have found over the years that I may have one fire method that works really great, but for some reason in that situation, I use something different and it's more successful. But keeping it all in one place, this is really important. And I want to give a big shout out to Exotac. Uh, they are my number one fire starter. They are the best made in the USA down in Georgia. And they make some of the best fire starting tools out there. In fact, this tool roll is from Exotac. You get 20% off using Suits 20 with the link down below in the description. First aid. Uh, this is definitely something that you're going to need to take care of. This is a trauma kit. And uh, this is by uh, North American Rescue. But this is a great kit, but this is mainly for trauma. Um, and for everyday kind of what we call boo-boo kits, you know, you're gonna need to have uh, Advil, Imodium, Band-Aids, things like that. Uh, and this is just another smaller kit. Of course, you have your tourniquet, your chest seals, uh, hemostatic gauze, different things that really help. Getting training makes it this much better. One thing that we carry is a large kit for first aid. Again, it takes up room but man, first aid, if you need it, uh, there's no other substitute. Having a tarp, uh, one thing I love about tarps, they have eyelets, I carry tent stakes, paracord. Uh, I can set this up as a shelter, uh, but you can get car awnings that actually will come off of the vehicle. You can even get a camper set up to attach to the top of your car. They're not cheap. Uh, the awnings typically are not too bad, but here with this tarp, I can set this the same way I could set a standard awning up but I could also use this as a shelter. I can use it as a sunshade. I can use it if the windows get busted out and cover up the windows. I mean, tarps are just universal. There's so many things you can use them for. So definitely have at least one large tarp uh, with you. Now tarps and awnings are great. Of course, a tent that fits on the top of your vehicle is definitely gonna be an optimum. It'd be a great way to, to kind of camp out. But also having a tent and putting that tent in your vehicle you may be at a spot where you can set the tent up. It just gives you more living space, gives you more room, and you'll be a lot more comfortable. So tents are something that are typically easy to pack away. Uh, if you have a rack on your roof, you can put it up there. And any items, again, that are, are not susceptible to getting wet, you can put those on the roof. It's gonna give you a lot more room. Plus, with just extra storage, having a jerry can full of gas, if it's just a five gallon gas can, Figure out a way to mount it to the outside of your vehicle. And if you're in a certain area, you may be able to go that much longer with just having that extra fuel. Of course, along with the tarp, I love to have heavy mill trash bags. They're small, they're compact. I can pack them in, but they're very heavy mill. <laughs> so these are contractor bags. You get them in big, large boxes at Home Depot or Lowe's. They're made to haul off trash and leaves and yard debris. Uh, these are great for ground cover. If you have to change a tire, you can put this down on the ground. If you want to just do some things on the ground, but you don't want to get them dirty, you can lay these out. You can cover them up. You can use them as shelter. This, there's a bazillion things you can do with heavy meal trash bags combined with a tarp, and you have a really good setup. And paracord. Paracord is a very useful tool, something that you can use for so many different things. And so this also, again, helps with your tarp. It helps you to set up something. It does repairs. Uh, it can tie down things, especially if you have a luggage rack and you want to tie some stuff down. And with that, I would just add duct tape. That's one thing that's kind of, again, universal, and you can throw that in there, and you can do a lot of things with it. Self-defense is definitely something that you need to take care of. Uh, and so having something capable, uh, this is just a Ruger GP100, just for example, but uh, pepper spray, to me, is a better option for non-lethal encounters uh, just having a, a firearm, uh, it's just like having a hammer, everything's a nail. So you want to have other non-lethal options. So good pepper spray. And then for those four-legged creatures, having bear spray or multiple attackers. And so this is something that's great to have. One problem, though, with these aerosol cans is if it gets really hot, uh, they can start to leak. They can even explode. So you don't want that in your vehicle, it's gonna run you out. Uh, and then make sure that you, know, you keep this out of your vehicles when you're spraying it. But definitely to me, these are two excellent self-defense options, especially if you can't own a firearm or you know, you're in a country or a place where they don't allow it. But having a gun is the ultimate 
in self-defense and it's something really, if you're able to, you need to have something. You need to defend yourself and your family. You're gonna be a target and people are gonna see your supplies. They're gonna want them, especially in a grid down situation. So this is gonna be important to keep you alive in more ways than one. Maps, guys, should be in your get home, bug out bag, whatever. Uh, GPS may not work. I have had to rely on maps before to get me out of situations where I was getting no cell service. Uh, so having maps in your vehicle, uh, to me, all the time is important. If you do not have GPS, if you're just out on the road, having maps is life-saving. You need to know where you are. And of course, we have a compass, which will help you as well. Uh, and then any navigational skills you have will help. But when you're driving, it's a little different. So get you some maps, make sure there are paper maps and put them in your vehicle and keep them there. Light, light is your number one security tool. And it's good to have light, especially at night. Having a small rechargeable lantern, great option. Uh, and then you can recharge this and during the day. But having your standard lights, I mean, this is a big broad beam. It's a huge security light. It puts out a lot of light. And then we have just a standard little handheld flashlight, which, you know, you need for smaller tasks and the lumens go really low down. Uh, and then we have this little flat flashlight. It's my EDC light. So having multiple lights is very important because one can go out and you can use the other. Uh, but light can also be your enemy. Uh, it can locate you. Uh, even a small light in a really dark area, people can pick it up. So you need to use discretion. If you're in a highly populated area, there's a lot of people around, you're great with light. But if you're not and you're trying to stay kind of hidden, uh, use light very sparingly. Plus, keeps your batteries from uh, running down. Hygiene. It's going to be a very important part, keeping yourself clean, especially if you have wounds or something happens, you need to keep yourself from getting infections. That can really be deadly. Being able to brush your teeth, being able to shower off. Um, there's a number of ways that you can do that. Um, of course, public restrooms, if they're available, you can go in, wash off. A lot of homeless do that. They can keep themselves clean, brush their teeth, just wash off a little bit and, uh, and go to the bathroom. Uh, so if that's not a possibility, there are some options from the camping world, which that's just a great resource. Uh, you know, you can have portable toilets. Uh, you can go all the way from very simple to very complicated. And of course, the price reflects it. One thing that I thought was pretty cool was a canopy that fits over one person standing. They can change clothes, and but then it has a little portable potty at the bottom so you can go to the bathroom, dispose of your waste as properly as you can. Burying it would probably be the best. Uh, so that just gives you an option and it gives you some privacy. Now one thing following hygiene is if you have any encounters with law enforcement. Uh, you know, in a grid down situation, you know, you may, you may not. It's just according to local law enforcement that might be around uh, starting to question what you're doing, you know, in that certain area. Uh, you want to make sure first off that you try to make sure it is an area that you can stop in. Uh, but also when you are clean and your car's organized and you don't look like you're up to something, you're going to get along a lot better with law enforcement um, and when they feel like they can trust you. And so the big thing is keep yourself clean, keep your car organized as much as possible and give the appearance that you are going toward a destination, that you're not just a vagrant. And to be honest with you, any people that you come in contact with, the cleaner, more presentable you are, the more they're gonna think about and trust you uh, than if you're just totally soiled, dirty, and you just look like you're aimless. Here along the side, I just have a number of different pouches with different things in them. Again, trying to stay organized in unusual places. Uh, and again, this is a mock-up. So while I have kits, you need to use every space available. And if there's some unusual spaces or different uh, areas where you just can stuff some things, it's better to have those organized instead of just crammed into a pile. Now, because you're in your car, it doesn't mean you don't need a bug out bag. Uh, if you have to leave your car, or if you can keep other different items that you're going to be using. It just keeps it redundant and you can have these items if you need them. Uh, I would not take out my items from my bug out bag and not put them back. So with this, I have a number of different options. Uh, and so if I have to leave my vehicle, I've already got a head start. Everything's together and I can survive. It's not going to be near as comfortable. I'm going to be a glorified refugee, but hopefully I'll live. So guys, the big thing here is to think, make a plan, uh, set up a mock living in your car setup. How much room do you have? Do you, can you keep the vital items you need? 
If you live in an urban environment, really bugging out is going to be your number one option. So you've got to really look and see how things are going to go. Uh, and of course, the more people you have, the more space you're going to need or the more cramped you're going to be. And you're going to end up leaving vital supplies back. And so you want to have everything that you know you're definitely going to need to survive. And setting this up is going to be the great way to do it. Uh, honestly, uh, this has made me think about a lot of things because I haven't really considered actually living in my vehicle for a number of days, maybe a week, maybe a month maybe longer, and being able to actually live fairly comfortably and have all the items I need, not only for me, but for my family. Because remember guys, if you're bugging out, you're a glorified refugee, and a vehicle gives you a lot more options. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. Be strong, be of good courage <laughs> is the best way to bug out. And the larger the vehicle, the better. Okay. The vehicle, I have a vehicle. You're gonna be worn out. Uh, having a vehicle and traveling in a vehicle is gonna be your best bet. Am I hitting my microphone? I sure am. It's for a tent, uh, am I hitting this? Uh, you can live in your car. Uh, and so having some kind of vehicle survival is just okay. How you doing? <laughs>